Hello, and welcome to Trashy Trashy, the podcast where we discuss all things garbage people. My name is Yay. Erica Curry. And I'm Cassandra Cardenas. And we're two trash-loving creeps. Just a couple of little dumpsters. Just allowed to walk amongst you and just just dumpster fires we see everywhere. Have you ever seen people who paint faces on their trash cans? I think that that's us. Yes, emoticons through trash cans. <laughs> yeah. Now, Cass, what are your trash credentials? I have to poop right now. Sorry, <laughs> that's too trashy. <laughs> Ah, my trash credentials. Let's see. I'm 30. I'm poor. I drink too much. I have to set Instagram like time limits on my phone for myself. And then every single day I say ignore limit. The same happens with Twitter a lot. I name every group chat I'm in which is so annoying of me. Is that, that's about our trash credentials, right? That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Where are your trash credentials? I'm 33. I'm also poor. I grew up in a trailer house, a double wide. It was bricked, but it still counts. Fuck yeah. I also ignore all of the time limit on my apps. When I was little, I put ketchup on my mashed potatoes. (gasps) I would organize massive trades from an, in our school cafeteria for like rolls and things like that. Chicken strips for rolls for mashed potatoes. And I would get in trouble for orchestrating these three or four way trades between students where one kid would just get like a plate of mashed potatoes. I mean, this doesn't sound trashy as much as it sounds like your potential was stifled and that you could have been a very successful leader. <laughs> Thank you so much for acknowledging my leadership skills through trash. I mean, to pull that off. That's incredible. Ay, so I say, so I say. I don't think I knew that you grew up in a trailer house. I mean, it doesn't. How do I say this without being rude? It doesn't surprise me. It just more like I didn't know that that was what happened. Yeah, I guess I I just don't think about it. <laughs> My mom lives in a trailer house now. I guess a lot of old people just live in trailer houses. Yeah. They love it. I mean, it was bricked. It was nice, but it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I moved a lot around a lot as a child. So now mm-hmm. I move around a lot as an adult. It's yeah. hard to stay in an apartment for more than a year. It really is. But you have a wonderful place. I'm moving, though. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Aye. Aye. All right. Let's get into this week's stories. I was almost going to do the TMZ sound. (laughs) (laughs) Karen calls black woman a good little slave for wearing her mask at a bus stop. Mm, 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 mm. Now, yeah. The woman defends herself by saying that she's a person of color as well and that she's Mexican. And that's why she's allowed to say good little slave. Yeah, that was a weird. It was a weird vibe. She said, well, first of all, look, do I think anyone's right? Like, I don't think Karen, this Karen is correct, but I will say that, like, she made more sense when she was justifying, oh, I'm calling you a slave because you're wearing a mask like all the other slaves. That to me says, my point of view is sheeple wear slaves and, you know, that Joe Biden is a lizard person. But when you then double down and be like, but it's cool because I'm also a person of color. It's like, no, no, no. Hold on. (laughs) You were making somehow more sense before just being one of those people who doesn't want to wear masks. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, it was a bad look for this Karen. And do we know where this took place? If I had to put money on it, I would say Orange County. Uh, I'm going to guess Florida because most bad happens in Florida. (laughs) The most bad does happen in Florida. It is. (laughs) Have you been to Florida, Erica? I've been to uh, Tampa, Florida, which is the armpit of the universe. And I've been to Orlando. Yeah, I've been to Orlando twice. And uh, once like with my mom for like a Disney World vibe and then another time to compete in a show choir competition. So like I did some super Florida things, but I, I don't know, like that place sucks. Can I tell you, I went to Florida for my senior trip when I was in like graduating from high school, like our school sponsored senior trip. And I had the option to go to Disneyland, like fully paid, go to Disneyland. And instead I opted to go to the mall. Oh, Erica. That's how much of a garbage person I am is I went to a, an out of state mall thinking that was going to be more exciting than Disney world. 
Did you buy anything? Oh, I bought a rhinestone cross tank top from Nikki Hilton's line. Oh, no. No. <laughs> and was ecstatic about it. Again, of course you were. That's how garbage I am. Why did they give people the option? We didn't have like, and I didn't go on my senior trip because I was fucking too sick for that. Uh, not like physically sick. Like I was, I was a piece of trash and I didn't want to go. <laughs> I didn't like doing social events that made me one of the norms. But why did they give you the option? If they're so taking the- you out of state, it seems like it shouldn't be a multiple choice trip so the first two days we had to go to universal those were paid for yeah and then we had like a free day where we could choose what we did and everyone else chose to go to disney world and i chose to go to the mall with a couple of girlfriends do they are they sad about it now I, you know, I haven't stayed that close in touch with them, so I, yeah. I wouldn't know. I also went to a gourmet McDonald's that night. What? <laughs> so they have in Florida, Orlando specifically, they have gourmet McDonald's, which are like they have like spaghetti carbonara and or, you know, oh. they have like fancy dishes as well as like Big Macs and French fries. Uh you know, you ever feel like you give all your credentials and then you realize you're in over your head? Yes. Like, I don't know if I'm trashy enough <laughs> to, like, hear that and not crumble. <laughs> like, it's, that's crazy. Yeah, I had, like, a shrimp pasta dish and a Big Mac and was like, I'm living life. Uh, it, there's a Denny's in Vegas that sells salmon. <laughs> 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 Someone I know who I used to be on another podcast with said it was some of the best salmon she's ever had. And I'm just like, what? Why did you order the salmon from a Denny's on like it's like on the strip, but it's like down where the stratosphere is where it's like, yeah, I guess that's the strip. But like oh. no one's over there. Yeah, technically the strip, but not like it's somehow 10 degrees hotter down there for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, that's so crazy. A gourmet McDonald's in a mall. Yeah, I mean, that's probably better than Disney World, right? (laughs) (laughs) Now, 10 years later, when I actually went to, or five years later, when I went to Disneyland for the first time, I was kicking myself. Mm. I mean, hot tip on Disney World is just basically like, well, I guess it sounds like like it's cooler. It's like Disneyland, but bigger. Like, it's very Mm -hmm. similar. I think when I went to Disney World, I'd been to Disneyland so many times in my lifetime that I was like, oh, this is like the same shit ish. I don't know what I was expecting. I think I was expecting like a whole new like theme park, just like top to bottom new stuff. Different movies. Yeah. 101 well, Dalmatians ride. One day I'll go to Disney World. I just, you know, I I left it there. I, I you, played it all out on the field. You're like Disney adult adjacent, aren't you? I am. I used to have a pass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, if we want to talk about trash. <laughs> Disney adults are trash you know that that's like on the top of my list of like when i'm when i'm dating and if i find out if i get a whiff of a disney adult i'm out i'm out can i tell you the trashiest tattoo i've ever seen yeah it was a set of matching so his and hers (laughs) disney like the disney mickey mouse like the ears but inside of it was filled with the Blue Lives Matter flag. Oh, oh, oh God. <laughs> wow. I did not see that coming. <laughs> His and hers, so like one of them still had a Minnie Mouse bow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like matching. Whoa. Where did that take place? I mean, I just, uh, we probably don't know, but like, I the think the greater we can internet. Get. Yeah. Somewhere, somewhere I assume in Southern California. Really? Yeah, totally. Why not? Orange County. They're nuts down there. Oh, my God. That's awful. Yeah. I hate that so much. They are the Florida of California. Yeah, the OC for sure. Because it's also like there's some people down there with like a ton of money. Oh, a shit ton of money. Florida is too. It's like, what? But you have money and you choose to live there. So I had to visit my cousins. Uh, They were doing like a Knott's Berry Farm 
trip. I don't know. Ill-advised Knott's Berry Farm trip. And so they were staying in a hotel room near Knott's Berry Farm. If you are not in California, there's a city called Anaheim, California. It's where I was born. That should have been part of my trash credentials. (laughs) But there's Disneyland, Knott's Berry Farm, Medieval Times, and then like a hockey stadium and also a baseball. Anaheim's crazy. It's not that big. It has all of those things inside. (laughs) But what I learned from going and visiting my cousins in a hotel in Anaheim was like, oh, I got to stop and get beer really fast, you know, because Shoddy got to get her drink on. And I stopped at a 7-Eleven in Anaheim and I was like, why the fuck do I feel like I'm on the set of Breaking Bad right now? Like Anaheim is so well up. The upkeep is only centered at these big places. The rest of it is is fucking terrifying. Like, meth, no teeth, just, like, weird, like, oh, it's, it's intense. Yeah, I've spent a fair amount of time at, at Anaheim in, in Disney, Disneyland, or Disney, yeah, Disneyland. I've spent about a time at that hockey arena, because yeah. I'm, a, I'm a hockey person. Same. And that is... That is some true trash as well. Yeah. What, being hockey people? Being hockey, <laughs> being hockey fans uh, yeah. in Southern California where ice does not exist. <laughs> but it's so fun because they get in fights. They get in fights. And that's all I want is the bruisers. Same. I'm like, put him on the ice. Put who is the one on the Kings who got in a lot of fights a long time? Kyle Clifford. Put Kyle Clifford on the ice. Oh, he's going to knock someone out. Was yeah. my boy for the Ducks, and I was just like, "Get in!" Are a you fight. a Ducks fan? I'm a Ducks fan. Oh my god! And look at us. I'm a Kings fan. True rivals. True we rivals, are. but yet we come together for our love of trash. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, right. I like also, I like going to hockey games too because you can like say fuck in the stands. I don't know if you can, but I do. You know, I've gotten into friendly. walking fights like with rival fans while wearing like my Ducks jersey. <laughs> oh fuck you! Like walking out of the stadium. And I, if you know me in real life, I am a very calm. I was like, just thinking that. I was like, you're the nicest person, but it's just so funny. <laughs> you get wrapped up in a moment. Something about hockey really riles me up, and I've yeah. gotten into screaming fights with fans. It's so funny. Speaking of screaming, let's move on to our next story. Yeah. Great White, the band that famously killed 100 people after setting off pyrotechnics inside of a small club, is at it again. The veteran rockers played a concert in Dixon, North Dakota, this past Thursday with no social distancing or any other safety protocols. The concert was part of a series called First on First, which flaunts the fact that no safety restrictions amid the coronavirus pandemic. We do not have restrictions, believe in it, and we don't have any, April gets an event coordinator for the series told the Dixon Press. Okay. First and foremost, how do you kill a hundred people and not be like and ever play music again? Am I do I take trauma too seriously? No, Cass, we're both improvisers at some point in our lives. How do you get a hundred people to a show? Oh, I know, truly. That's really what's up. Like, How do you get a hundred people to a show to to kill? Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, they're oh, that sucks. They're never- garbage. I'm saying that I don't know why I think about this constantly, but I do. If I just saw someone die in front of me, I don't know if I'd be like, okay. And so to watch a hundred people, I'm going to guess burn alive because when I wanted to make sure that when I hit my guitar solo, there was fire. Holy guacamole. That's I- fucking scary. I don't know how they aren't completely traumatized. <laughs> yeah. Or how they continue to go on. Like, I don't love anything so much that I could watch or know I'm the cause of that death. Yeah. And continue to do that thing. Let's think about it this way. People get divorced when their children die and it's not their fault, you know? Mm-hmm. So <laughs> why should you think about it this way? I don't know. But like to me, you're 
you <laughs> just killed a hundred fans who are probably there to see the band after you. And you show must go on. Maybe they're heroes. Uh, I mean, are they trash icons? Yeah, we should come up with what a trash icon is. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, North Dakota is not taking the coronavirus seriously. No, there's like pockets of states where like they just refuse to admit it exists. Yeah, which is bad. My um, my brother's girlfriend is from North Dakota and she was supposed to be in a wedding uh, that actually is happening today or yesterday. I don't know. I mean, today's. Yeah, it's happening. 300 people that's too many people yeah she didn't go she was like i'm sorry i'm not i'm not doing this she lives in california she's like it's not safe for me you guys don't want me to expose in reality she's like i'm not gonna go and be at a 300 person wedding i think that no matter if you live in somewhere where there's no coronavirus but you know that the coronavirus is happening don't you think that like 300 people is a little bit of a middle finger to everyone else. Oh, a hundred percent. I don't, I I find myself to be a somewhat sociable person and I don't think I could, I could find 300 people to invite to my wedding. It's, I mean, that's when it's like people are bringing their families and their parents. Like you, you send out, save the date or here's the invitation. And then you go, yes, I will be there. I will be eating the chicken and also plus eight because I'm bringing my husband, my three kids, my parents who you met once and (laughs) also my grandpa because he can't be alone. Like (laughs) everybody's coming to a seated dinner on your special day. Yeah. That better be a buffet to get him through it quick. There's no. Yeah. One time my mom took me to a wedding for someone that she worked with and like, I don't know if we were invited. <laughs> you crashed. <laughs> I don't know. Like, because I remember being young and I remember her being surprised that we were there. But like, we didn't stay for the reception. I don't know. We probably, it was like in a church. Anyone can come to the church, right? I, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't, I, I we, we, you and I know that my religious upbringing was a little <laughs> scattered. <Fine>. Yeah. <laughs> I unclear. I one time went to a wedding that I RSVP. I was invited, and I don't remember now if I got a plus one or not. But I brought a plus one, mm-hmm. and it was somebody that the couple had like specifically not invited. But I was not. I was not aware of that. Oh no! And so they were like, "Oh, we're so glad to see you." <laughs> Yikes. Whoopsies. Whoopsie. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty trashy of me. You got a, a band called Great White after the shark, no doubt. Mm-hmm. I hope. Also, and then they, they look- issued an apology. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Sorry we played a show. Let me see. Her. I'll read their weird apology. Um, we understand that there are some people who are upset that we performed this show during this trying time. We assure you that we worked with the promoter. North Dakota's government recommends masks be worn. However, we are not in a position to enforce the laws. We had the luxury of hindsight, and we would like to apologize to those who disagree with our decision to fulfill our contractual agreement. The promoter and staff were were nothing but professional and assured us of the safety precautions. Our intent was simply to perform our gig outside in a welcoming small town. We value the health and safety of each and every one of our fans, minus the 100 that we killed, as well as our American and global community. We are far from perfect. (laughs) I don't... Are you fucking kidding me? (laughs) Honestly, I'm going to end every email with, I am far from perfect from here on out. <laughs> no, it's you just say we. You collect them in there. We yeah. we are far from perfect. We that's are far so, from perfect. That's my new email signature. 
That's so fucking funny. Yeah. Like, what do you mean, Heinz, the luxury of hindsight? What? There's the luxury of foresight right now. That's what it's called. Foresight. Yeah. Yeah. No, we've got the luxury of foresight. Yeah. We have the luxury of foresight where, like, this is a fucking pandemic. We're not recording this together. Because you and I have the luxury of foresight. The luxury of foresight is keeping me in my spare room. Yeah. It's, I'm in a walk-in closet right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the luxury, luxury that we both have. I know. <laughs> we should take back when we said we were poor. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking of poor, some people got a poor experience at national parks. Yes. And that was leave. a great segue. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> some people go to the Yelp pages of national parks and leave them zero and one star reviews. And we've rounded up a handful of these. I think it's pretty trashy to review nature. (laughs) I agree wholeheartedly with that. So this one is from Yosemite National Park. Trees block view and there are too many gray rocks. I mean, that's fair. But like, what are the trees blocking the view of? The sky? That's the view. The view is the trees. I mean, these these parks have been around for like 130 years. You know, Yosemite and Sequoia National Park. It's a blessing that we have natural parks (laughs) so that like rich people didn't just buy up all of the pretty views. And these people have the gall to complain. Gray rocks are ugly, though. Gray rocks are hideous. Yeah. So I get it. They were some of those purple mountains majesty. Oh, where are those purple mountains majesty? Besides in the song. Great question. I think that's what those people thought they were going to see. Yeah, probably. Uh, I see another review. Mm-hmm. There are bugs and they will bite you on your face from Sequoia <laughs> National Park. <sighs> Sounds like a personal problem. I mean, it's rude that they didn't remove all of the bugs. Yeah, because it's, you know, bugs like those trees. So we should have, we all have the luxury of hindsight, I suppose. Oh, hindsight's uh, such a luxury. Yeah. From the Isle Royale National Park, established in 1940. Mm. No cell service and terrible Wi-Fi. (laughs) This was written by an Instagram model. Like, has to be. Yeah, has to be. I couldn't get my nature thirst traps out. Your phone still takes pictures. Or so it was actually it's probably someone being like, Yes, honey, fine, we can go on this trip, but I need to work. Can you assure <laughs> me that our Airbnb has Wi Fi? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Of course. The listing says it has Wi Fi. Yeah. This Wi Fi is terrible. Uh, here's something I did not know is that, that Joshua Tree National Park was only established in nineteen ninety four. What? Yeah, that's so recent. I mean, maybe that's when they named it like a national park, but like. Nope, that's when they planted all the Joshua trees. I got that from high authority. When they created all that desert? (laughs) When they created the desert. uh, This review says the only thing to do here is walk around the desert. That's fair. And here's why. Because if you don't do drugs, sometimes you don't get what the whole deal is behind Joshua Tree. And like, that's coming Mm -hmm. from me, a person who does not do drugs. I'm going to Joshua Tree in about two weeks. And yeah, I, but I like wandering around the desert. I I think think people think it's more than it is because it's like so close to Coachella and it's close to Palm Springs where there is a lot to do that people just assume like, oh yeah, let's do Joshua Tree. It's so fun. Like we'll get a yurt. And then it's like, okay, like that's it. You have a yurt. I do an annual sound bath at Joshua Tree. Oh, I know we couldn't do we. I couldn't schedule one because uh, of fucking COVID. COVID has ruined my annual sound bath where I go and feel very zen and I just I recharge for the year. Mm-hmm. I wear my most ridiculous cult leader looking outfit. You're like a trash onion, you know, like that's a new level. That's There's a new layers. Layer. Yeah. There's layers. <laughs> I'm jealous. I wanted that sound bath experience. I wanted to like cry and then fall asleep. So 
So this is a very personal story. The first time I did a sound Wait. bath uh, mm-hmm. at the Integratron, which is out in Joshua Tree, I took half of an edible, which was not enough to get me high. Okay. I did the sound bath and I came like three times just what? sitting there. It was insane and then afterwards I went with a group of people and so I was like I was trying to gauge where I was and if that was like a a normal experience (laughs) and I was like so did anything happen how do you feel and like eventually the story came out and everyone was like well you go girl but I was like is this supposed to be happening I'm really, really, I have questions. <laughs> Three times? How long in what span of time? Within like an hour, like 45 minutes to an hour. Holy shit. So you just laid there. And the recipe is half an edible, an open flowing dress, and... <laughs> <laughs> and a sound bath and a sound and can, bath and you can come three times <sighs> evidently i have a unique biology that allowed this to happen that's bananas erica it no was, one else had that experience no one else and everyone was like well we paid the same 45 dollars <laughs> you want to look up a yelp review you should see if anybody else has done that <laughs> Posted up on Yelp, five stars, would give it six, came three times in an hour. I don't know what they're doing with these bowls, but they sure do know how to beat my drum. Oh, God. I can't (laughs) believe I told that story, but it's true. Don't edit it out. It's perfect. (laughs) Speaking of holes, somebody reviewed the Grand Canyon National Park as a hole. A very, very large hole. (laughs) I mean, yeah, dudes. What are they expecting to see? Aliens? I mean, when I went to the Grand Canyon the first time with my dad, he pulled the, like, complete Clark Griswold of, well, we've seen it. (laughs) And we were like, no, we're going to stay for more than five minutes. (laughs) But my dad was like, well, this is it. (laughs) I have felt a little I've been wanting to go to the Grand Canyon like especially lately because it's just like so boring in my house that I'm like I want to get out of my house I'll drive wherever and um, I do feel that like a little tinge of fear that I'm going to get there pull over get out look and be like okay cool time to get back in my car and drive seven hours back home (laughs) like it seems like something to do on the way to something else yeah unless you're hiking it or like going down into the canyon itself which i don't do that there's not a lot to do i heard a story about somebody that like sat at the edge of the canyon and just watched the other side for like a whole day and then would move like 40 feet down and do the same thing and the same thing and it was supposed to be like you'll never see anything like this and it nothing will ever repeat but I don't buy any of it (laughs) get a job (laughs) all right that's enough of that Uh, so we've got Nick Cannon oh Nick Cannon Cannon was fired for making some anti-Semitic comments. Or was he fired or was he just in trouble? It looks like because... Uh, uh, I believe Viacom let him go. Okay. Wild and Out is over. That explains something. You know, I follow someone on Instagram who was on Wild and Out and he was like, I love you, Nick. Like, thanks for all the years that you had me on this show and stuff. I just assume that Wild and Out got canceled. Also, I just assume that Wild and Out got canceled... 10 years ago. Oh, no. I think it's still going strong. That's... See, I don't get MTV, so that that's fine. Um, but he, he didn't get fired from The Masked Singer. They're still cool with it. Right. So Fox <laughs> remains garbage. Fox remains garbage. Viacom, out of left field, suddenly has some conscience. 
Yeah. So he said he was on his podcast with um, a former public enemy member, Richard Pro- Pro- Professor Griff Griffin, mm-hmm. who was also fired from public enemy for making anti-Semitic comments back in 1989. Yeah. And he was going off on some anti-Semitic stuff. And then he was kind of just being like, you know, people hate me now because I tell the truth and Nick Cannon's like hey don't be afraid like you're speaking facts you know and things like that and um, I I was frankly like kind of shocked by this but then why you know I was horrified (laughs) anti-semitism is trashy flat out there's no wiggle room there it's bad they were talking about the true Hebrews conspiracy it's just bad Overall, I can't believe that two adults in 2020 got onto microphones and spewed this hate. You know, there's something so specific with child stars because Nick Cannon's been famous for a a long long time. time. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know when he started, but he was probably a teenager at least when he started, you know, becoming Nick Cannon. And so I kind of just, I, this isn't, I'm not, there's no passes here, but I do acknowledge that sometimes people who have always been famous tend to kind of exist on a different plane of existence, what not necessarily like better or worse, but they just don't live in the same world as us. I think once you've been famous for long enough, you start to forget and like lose some Sight of what anything is. Yeah. He sucks. No. I mean, this is, this is like a huge shitty bummer, but there is something about somebody that's been, once you get to the bubble of yes, where everyone around you is a yes man. Yeah. And no one's there to like remind you of like what is good and bad anymore. I think that's why I feel like I feel horrified. But I also, again, I don't feel a lot of like surprise because it's right. like, well, that's fair. Who the fuck is Nick Cannon? Like Nick Cannon is he's a, he wasn't even an actor. I mean, well, no, he was an actor, but he's known for being himself. He's a personality. Right. So, yeah, that's it's uh that's pretty bad. We'll see how far the how the mask singer handles that going forward. I mean, he's not like the reason people watch. No, I mean, we watch to see who the who was behind the mask. Do you watch that show at all? I I catch clips of it. It's, it's pretty kind of wild. Fun. It's kind yeah, of fun. it's yeah. a good time. Yeah, I I hate that I love it, but I do. Ken Jong is like borderline unbearable on it, and yet I'm like, yeah, fuck it, it's fun. <laughs> I mean, it's fun to guess. It's fun to guess. Like, that show's kind of littered with problematic people. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, you got Nick Cannon hosting, anti vaxxer Vax- extraordinaire Jenny McCarthy. You've got Weirdo McWeirdinson. Um, what's his fucking name? Robin Thick. Yeah. Problematic. Ken, problematic for sure. Ken Jong is just Ken Jong, like, whatever. He's in the Hangover movies, so that's so bad. Uh, <laughs> And then um, who else? Oh, the the girl from Pussycat Dolls. Nicole Schlesinger? Something like that. So, oh, oh, please, please to the stands, to the Nicole stands, please don't come after me for her last name. I know. I'm not going to say that there's anything wrong with her. I don't know her. It's fine. I mean, she started the Pussycat Dolls, so who knows? That band is so funny. I don't know why. I think that she really just couldn't have a solo career. That's the only explanation for why she would be in the Pussycat Dolls, where no one else sings but her. Mm -hmm. But they're just dancing. (laughs) Some bops, though, truly. Some bops. Now, here's something that hits home for me, and that's Oklahoma's... Anti-vax governor tests positive for coronavirus, but does not regret not wearing a mask. Jeez. So Kevin, you know what a fucking you speak Kevin, from it. Oh yeah, Kevin Stitt is the governor of Oklahoma. I think he's a grade A jackass. And he attended Trump's rally last month, and then he tested positive for Corona on Tuesday. You know, I just what. You know, like, I don't regret not wearing a mask. Like, I just don't understand that. You heard about that that party in Texas, right? They had like a COVID party. Like Uh someone had COVID and then they were like, let's go. Everyone goes and whatever. Or or they had a 
I don't know if it was that or like if they were trying to all get immunity or if they were like it was literally just let's have a party in despite of COVID. Either way, some guy who was 30 years old died and he's being quoted all over the internet, which who knows if this is true, but like he's being quoted all over the internet of mm-hmm. saying to his nurse, like Joe Bluth, I've made a terrible I've made a huge mistake, you know? I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> like <laughs> Which is like, I we shouldn't laugh because he's dead. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, you did. And I'm just wondering, like, if this if this Oklahoma uh, governor is going to have that like Joe Bluth moment where he's just like, I've made a I've made a huge mistake. I I feel like he has no regrets from from all the reports that I read about what he's saying. You know, he's encouraging Oklahomans to do their part, but at the same time has been photographed in public at, you know, busy restaurants and, you know, Oklahoma's cases continue to rise. And he respects people's rights to not wear a mask. I don't know. I Is it a right? Your rights stop when my health is infringed, is the way I I, feel. I don't know. We gotta... We gotta, we gotta take a look at this constitution. I uh, we shouldn't. I have no time to read the constitution. It's so boring. But I, I just read the cliff notes. Yeah, totally. I'm like, what is it's like? No, I'm thinking of the Bill of Rights. Ugh, I don't even know if I know the difference. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, I hope uh, I pray for a speedy recovery for him. I don't want anyone else to die, even if they kind of have it coming. You know, I don't want to wish anybody ill will, but what do you expect? You know? Totally. I. That's all I have to say about that. Yeah. That's all I can say about that. Cass, are you ready for the dumpster fire of the week? I am. All right. So <laughs> Dumpster fire sounds. Dumpster fire sounds. That so, stinks. <laughs> <laughs> So are you familiar with the Paycheck Protection Program, the PPP loans that the government gave out? They are to keep to allow small businesses to continue to pay their employees through the coronavirus, correct? Correct. Yes. Got it. So a lot has been done into the release, releasing of the records of who received those loans. Okay. An organization listed as a hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center has received millions of dollars in government backed paycheck protection loans, PPP loans, according to the Small Business Administration. So the Center for Democracy and Media was the first to report on the loans, which went to six nonprofits for a total of somewhere between 2.3 million and 5.7 million. They only have the ranges, not the exact sums. So some of the organizations went to an anti-Muslim hate group called Center for Security Policy. Jeez. A couple of anti-immigration hate groups also received them. Several anti-LGBTQIA hate groups received some of these loans. And the largest loan went to the American Family Association, which was received up to $2 million in these PPP loans. That's and that's an anti LGBTQ organization. I didn't know that these hate groups paid. I didn't know you could get you could get paid to be in a hate group. Uh, it's America. I think anybody can get paid to hate. This, I mean, these are the types of groups that like donate to political campaigns, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So a lot of these were noted to have less than ten or less employees. And the government has defended it saying, this is what the program is supposed to do. It is helping small businesses. Sheesh. Uh, looks like the a top former official, Brian Fisher, uh, who worked for the American, what is this, Amer- AFA, American Family Association, he blamed gay men for the Holocaust. Straight trash. Yeah, but hey, you know what? He gets to pay his rent. So thanks, America. <laughs> Yeah. David Lane, a right wing activist, posted an article on Tuesday on the AFA website calling anti or Antifa and Black Lives Matters an alliance between two devils of Nazism and communism. Lane blamed this on Nazism. Nazism. I thought when you said Nazism, I thought like it just made him sick to his stomach. And I was like, interesting word. And but I, it's Nazi. That, no, that's, that's it. They both work. I can't, I can't read. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> That's how trash I am is I can't read. <laughs> yeah, this is bad. Yes. This is 
It's really bad. You can't actively be on the side that de- denies the coronavirus while then benefiting from the coronavirus. Mm-hmm. Why are the people who are the fucking worst doing the best right now? Great question. Great, Great, question. Great question. I think. Do you have an answer? <laughs> I can't no. believe it. I, oh, okay. I'm in full support of this PPP loans, but I also think you have to like really look at who's applying and like what these are. I mean, this was essentially free money from the government. These are forgivable loans. And I hate that this is who it's going to support. So Center for Immigration Studies, uh, founded by white nationalist John Tanton, um, who has ties to a senior White House advisor um, Mm -hmm. and noted white nationalist Stephen Miller. They received a loan somewhere between three hundred and fifty thousand and one million dollars to support 15 jobs. These are the people who spent all spring blaming undocumented immigrants from Mexico and Latin America for spreading the coronavirus in the first place. Said that by them crossing borders is why we have coronavirus. He for all about China. That's uh, I mean, I just I'm not blaming. I'm not blaming China for the coronavirus. No, it started there. But like, it's I, just I just, where it started. This is just fact. It's just it, weird that this group hates Mexicans so much that they're willing to just place the blame over there. <laughs> I think facts are always something that are fluid with these hate groups. Yes, yes. Also, like three hundred fifty thousand to one million dollars for fifteen jobs. I was trying like, to do the math on that. That's pretty outrageous. A monthly salary. Yeah, like how long do they expect to be out of? Also, why can't you do hate group stuff from home? Yeah, you don't need to go to the office for a hate group. Yeah, I mean, sure. Like maybe you know your psychotic newspaper clippings will pile up a little bit on your home office desk, <laughs> but like. What kind of offices do these places even have? It seems like it's all from home. I work remotely from a hate group and I'm actually getting a bonus now. It's pretty outrageous, I think. I, also, a lot of churches got loans, which I'm not calling them a hate group outright. But if you don't pay into a tax system, it's pretty outrageous to me that you receive government funds. Wow. That's all Those I'm strong saying. Words. Strong words. Strong words. Strong words. And that's. Uh, that's all I have to say about that. Yeah, that's all I have to say about that. The dumpster fire of the week is definitely like these PPP bummer. loans. Yeah. All right, Cass, what is uh, what is it that you are hoarding this week? What am I hoarding? OK, so what I'm hoarding, I can't throw it away. I can't get rid of it. Oh, I just can't help myself. I might need it later. I'm ho- this is like so shitty and trashy, in my opinion. I'm hoarding Hamilton. I finally watched Hamilton on Disney Plus. Watched it last night. It was a fucking delight. I thought I was going to be like cool and be like, no, I'm going to go against the grain in the mainstream. And like, this doesn't do enough to acknowledge slavery and Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And like Lin-Manuel Miranda, like, you know, like does his thing. I don't know. But I just couldn't help it. I was like blown away. So impressed. I even like Lin-Manuel Miranda's like weird cry voice that he does when he's singing and it makes him sound worse. Like he's got a very nice voice but when he does this it sounds bad because he can't cry because he's like I guess not that great of an actor. I don't know. It doesn't matter that Hamilton was so good. So I I am trash. Rain it on me. I, I can't I can't. I love that for you. I still haven't seen it. I'm holding out. It is so long. <laughs> did it's you take so like a, long. Did you take a theater break? They have an intermission. They they factor in a one minute intermission, which I think is very cute. Obviously, you can pause it and do whatever you want because it's your house. Mm-hmm. But like, if you want to treat it like a real show, it's like one minute intermission, and you're like, ah, I gotta run to the bathroom. Is there a line? You know, is there a line in my house? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, it's it's very, very good. I really, really recommend it. I know I have to cave and watch it at some point. I just haven't yeah. yet. Yeah. That's all. I just haven't yet. I, I own the soundtrack. I can sing some of the songs from memory, but I just haven't. You own the soundtrack and you haven't watched it? I know. Okay, so this is a thing. So people will get soundtracks to musicals. They did it with Book of Mormon, all these things. I refuse. 
I hate spoilers. I hate spoilers and I need to watch things from the beginning. So I've only listened to the first like six songs. Let's say it's a four disc set. I've listened to like the first CD. So I have no idea what happened. Where did you, where are you getting CDs? (laughs) I'm just saying like in this imaginary. (laughs) You can't buy CDs anymore. What are you talking about? Like imagine it's broken down into (laughs) CDs. I haven't watched Hamilton yet, the live recording, because I don't know. No, it's three VHSs. I just don't want to lose the time. <laughs> I'm trash because I've only listened to like six songs is all I'm saying. On CD. <laughs> That's the worst part. <laughs> <laughs> I just never can change them out, you know? Oh my God. That's so funny. <laughs> uh, what do you got? What are you hoarding? I'm hoarding Legendary on HBO yes. Max. Yes, yes, yes. Which is all about uh, the houses of ballroom that do competitions. So I'm currently crushing hardcore on House Ninja. Ballroom is like what came out of the queer scene in like the 80s of like Vogue came out of ballroom. Voguing itself came out of ballroom. The death drops, like death drops, wig yeah. flips, all of every dance move that you've ever seen originated in ballroom. Pretty much. And especially if you're like a RuPaul's drag race person. Yes. A lot of the stuff that they do is based off the ballroom. Is based off ballroom scene. They have the different houses competing uh, against each other and they have judges and it is just every Every outfit, every move, everything is just completely iconic to me. So I'm, I can't let go of legendary. Don't you just love to hate LaRoche? Yes. Oh my God. I know. I know. I will say that HBO Max, its very existence is kind of trash to me right now because I already pay for HBO and then I have to get HBO Max, which costs exactly the same and has everything. So it's like, to me, it's like, oh, no brainer. I'll just switch over. Mm -hmm. But then fucking HBO Max doesn't have their contracts all filed with Roku and with Amazon. So if I want to, it's basically I have to start paying $60 a month for a service that I already have, Mm -hmm. but I can only watch it on my computer until they get their contracts. And this is such first world problems. Like I have to watch it on my laptop instead of my TV. But it's true. First world problems are trash problems and that's okay. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) I have one more thing that I'm hoarding. Okay. If it's worth it. A lot of really uh, a lot of restaurants have switched to takeout only because of the coronavirus Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is not really fancy fancy schmancy restaurants are not immune to this if you know anything about me you know I like to spend a lot of money on food and I like to go to fancy restaurants so right now some places that I wouldn't normally be able to afford to eat at are doing takeout in a more affordable fashion and so I ate last night takeout from Vespertine which Vespertine is trash in itself it's in culver city the building looks stupid it's like a full weird wavy building i don't know if this is true but i'm pretty sure that like you have to take an elevator up and then when in the elevator like this is if you're doing the full dining experience which is like 300 dollars a person i think people whisper to you in the elevator if you go to vespertine's website it is nothing about food and it is only like a weird dark dialogue less art film and with the food yesterday it came with a vr code to get a photo essay to explain what we were eating <laughs> like this is trash bougie excellence it was oh, fucking cuban that. food it was cuban food it was so good i love cuban food i'm cuban mm-hmm. yum 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 gimme 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 i didn't ch- i scrolled through the uh, essay very quickly because i was like i don't need you to explain to me your you know your grandmother waking up at 4 a.m. in like little Havana (laughs) to start on the plantain. Like, shut up. Shut up. Just make the food. It was very good, though. And it was still $65 a person. So it's still pretty expensive for takeout. But I don't care. I wanted it. Hey, if you want it, you want it. And this time, it's all about tiny indulgences are getting us through. (laughs) Exactly. Well, Cass, thank you so much. Erica, Uh, thank you so much. 
and tell people where they can find you online. Instagram and Twitter, my handle is the same. It's at Cass Cardenas. I'm also on another podcast called The Nooner Podcast. It's on the Smodcast Network. And we record live Tuesday nights and we'll also pod it on iTunes. So look for us, Nooner. I'm the only female host on the Smodcast Network that I know of. So that's a thing. Uh, you can find us at Trashy Podcast on Twitter. Yes. And you can find me on Instagram at Iconic Erica Curry. Mm-hmm. Guys, keep on looking for the trash in this world and call may it you out. Have a very, may you have a garbage week. May you have a very garbage week. Bye. Thanks.